A very good evening to all of yours and uh, welcome to this week's edition of The Agenda. My name is Taiwan Jabela, your host. We are very, very happy tonight for welcoming back uh, studio guests after a couple of weeks of doing these uh, conversations virtually. So thank you for joining us. And uh, tonight on the show, I'll start with the ladies. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, uh, joined by Meme Francina Kahungu, Councillor Francina Kahungu. She's a Swapo councillor for the city of Vinduk. Uh, also, until not too long ago, she was the mayor of Vinduk. And uh, she's here tonight just to you know, talk to us about uh, a few things that have been happening <laughs> in the town that she previously led. And then, of course, I'm welcoming back my old friend, uh, Mr. Herbert Yao. Um, he is a land policy an, um, expert, if you can call him that way. You know, he's uh, well versed in the space of land, in the space of uh, labor, and, and, and all those related topics. Uh, Herbert, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Taiwo. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to welcome you, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Kaungu. Thank you very much, Taiwo, and good evening to the viewers. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So, Let's get into it. On Wednesday, Memeka Hongo, there was um, uh, incidences of land grabs in uh, the Tobias Hainyako constitu constituency. I think it was in Nombili. And um, I think you were on the ground. Tell us uh, what you observed and what exactly transpired according to your observation. Thank you very much. It is true. I was there on Wednesday after receiving many calls from residents. Uh, that the, uh, the officials sent by Ventuk Municipality Council are busy demolishing houses. Without wasting much time, I rushed to the scene. It is true, I observed the demolition and we tried what we could do there. So mm -hmm. it is true, houses were demolished. Uh -huh. Just to stay with you still before I go to Mr. Yao. Um, what was the are those illegal structures and um, when you get a call like that in what capacity did you get the call is it in your capacity only as francina kahungu or as a councillor of the city of Winduk who should then maybe have informed others also yes of course i was called in my capacity as a representative of people in the Ventuk Municipality Council. Mm. So meaning that in my capacity as a councillor, yeah. that is why I was called there. But specifically why the, some leaders called me, they said they have been calling for the chairperson of council to come and see if he can at least inform or instruct the, the, the demolishers to stop what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Herbert, this is a very delicate position to be in. You're a councillor who is supposed to look out for the interests of uh, the people that you're serving. But then you are confronted with a situation where people put up illegal structures in a country that is governed by law. What is, just how difficult is that situation? Mm. How do you handle it? Mm. It's a very difficult situation because two fundamental things clash. The one is the formality that the rule of law should apply. So there are certain rules for housing, where it can be built, standards to be met, etc. Yeah. And of course, we, we, we've seen in other countries in the region recently what can happen if that's just cast aside and, and you have a free for all or anger spills over. Yeah. But there's the other aspect, and that is that housing is a basic human rights. Yeah. Not only in Namibia, it was recognized by the UN yeah. as a basic human rights, yeah. the Council on Social, Economic and Cultural Rights of 66, the Covenant, sorry, reaffirms that. And, and I think in our particular history, where we're coming from, yeah. the protection of human rights for all, not just for a minority, mm. the enjoyment of a better life was closely associated with our view of independence and what life should be like for everyone mm. after independence. Mm. And now we see two dreadful things completely undermining it, of course, the general levels of poverty and unemployment, but it's closely reflected in the housing conditions mm. of the majority. Mm -hmm. in, in urban areas now, informal settlement has become the norm in Namibia. Mm. 
there are in fact more people in towns across the country living in what we call informal settlements than in formal brick housing. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not a issue that affects a few people on the margins. It has become a fundamental issue. And the right to housing, the right to decent housing and, and um, adequate housing, as the UN calls it, meaning not only the structure, but also services, schooling, mm -hmm. shops, etc., cetera, in, in the vicinity to live a decent life. Um, that requires a complete rethink of our, our housing policy. And, and we see that clash now. Mm. Housing as it should be a basic right yes. for all. And on the other hand, municipal regulations or laws that are now clashing yeah. as people, not out of choice, but by desperation, mm -hmm. are simply put, uh, forced to put up shacks just to have a head over their roof. And um, I, I wasn't there myself now in this one, mm. but it was even shown on TV uh, earlier this week, mm. how people in freezing temperatures, literally at mm. zero point, are lying now in the open. Now, mm. that cannot be. Exactly. There, there we must uh, put human rights and yeah. dignity mm. above regulations. We, we just can't do that. And, and without alternatives, kind of tear down uh, the, the shacks that people have and force them to lie in the open. That is was for me quite a shocking thing because it's a, a stark reminder mm. of the apartheid practices Indeed. that we had. Indeed. So, Memeka Hungudi, <clears throat> when you arrived on the scene on Wednesday in Ombili, uh, two questions for you. The first one is, where did these people come from um, who erected those structures? Did they just arrive in town and they, therefore they have nowhere to stay or were they living elsewhere in Vinduk? Then they go. They went to that area to set up their structures. That is the first question. But secondly, what were your interventions when you arrived at the scene? Thank you very much. Exactly, that was my question. Where are you from? Mm. The majority said we were renting, mm. and I have to indicate that the majority of those ones affected are young people. Mm. They said we were renting. And we lost a job. Some mm. said last year, some said this year. And we were not able or we are not able to pay for rent. As a result, we were evicted from those rooms or houses. Mm. And some indicated that they wrote letters already in, in February this year, mm. indicating that why don't the municipality give us that open land so that at least we can... Uh, put up our houses, mm. while some said they were also at places where they, those places are congested. There are too many houses. Mm. And again, they were also just renting. Mm. So out of some of those houses, others were taken to the place where they wanted also them now, these ones, mm. to put their houses. So. That is to answer your question, where do they come from? Yes. They came from housing, houses where they were renting, and some they were not renting, but they were chased. Mm. And I have to indicate also that I observe that some have places already, mm -hmm. but they saw the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So they realized, uh -uh, let us also go and clean. And this was confirmed by others too. Mm. The intervention. Yes, I met the officials from Venduk municipality. Mm. I asked and they told me that these people do not want to hear anything. And I also tried, I tried to, to tell them that what can we do now? Because I remember very well last year in November, mm. the same thing which happened just for one house. It was about to be demolished. Mm. Then I intervened being a chairperson of council. Mm. So that's when I, I inter intervened. So now for that one of Wednesday, I asked the deputy chief who was there mm. that now, did you inform the office of the acting CEO so that the mayor could be informed also? Then we instruct these officials to stop demolishing houses. Mm. He said, yes, even the report was sent, but the answer was they must wait 
the mayor was in the meeting and he will come as soon as possible. Mm. So hearing that the chairperson of council will come, I couldn't do anything further. And I must tell you that from there, when I was there that time, mm. the demolition stopped. Mm -hmm. I did not observe any more houses being demolished. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, Herbert, the <coughs> this, what uh, the councillor is telling us is uh, a continuation of something that has gone on for, for decades now. People putting up um, illegal structures out of desperation and uh, having those structures uh, removed because obviously it was not done uh, according to law. How, where did we go wrong as far as the land, urban land in particular is concerned? Just from independence, you, you alluded to mm. about how <clears throat> independence, the struggle for independence was really centered around these issues. 30, 31 years later, we are still confronted by these challenges. What is it that we should have done that we didn't do? Mm. No, and, and, and you're quite right, one, one must put that historical context in how towns emerged mm. and how black workers, in fact, only men were predominantly allowed, uh, allowed to move into some urban areas as mm. cheap labor for the mines, mm. for the fishing sector, etc. And mm. only few Namibians were allowed to settle, black Namibians were allowed to settle permanently. Mm. Now, what has happened just before independence was a complete commercialization of housing. Mm. The state withdrew from the responsibility for housing and sold off houses, including township houses. Mm. So that inhabitants would now um, own their house, be in charge of maintenance, and the construction of new houses was completely handed over to profit-seeking private enterprises. Mm. Mm. So the, the, the state as a provider of housing withdrew increasingly and we look at the ridiculous number that the national housing enterprises the number of houses that the nhe produces mm. compared to the number of houses needed it's ridiculous mm -hmm. they produce in the vicinity of six seven hundred houses a year and we need 10 20 times that the housing backlog now mm -hmm. states stands at three hundred thousand mm -hmm. so what went wrong after independence is that we did not understand housing as a basic right mm. and that the state has a role to play in facilitating that to happen as a basic good. Mm. The private sector, <clears throat> including the banks, understood housing as a source of major profits. Mm. When you look at commercial banks in Namibia, close to half of their profits comes from mortgages on housing. Mm. So the interests on housing has become a huge source over decades mm -hmm. of profits for the bank. Mm -hmm. Then you have private constructors, and that we've seen very strongly with the mass housing project, mm -hmm. where large amounts of government funds were gobbled up by middlemen. They constructed mass housing, not for the point of providing decent housing mm -hmm. to people, no, to become instant multimillionaires mm -hmm. by getting the contracts. Mm -hmm. So we have not understood that you must, that, that in fact you must weigh up this, this uh, option of the one group seeking profit from housing. It becomes a commercialized mm. good. And that's what even at global level has happened. That's why in many countries around the world, mm. adequate housing is a pipe dream. It's, housing has become unaffordable because it was driven by market forces. Mm. Practically, how did it play itself out about five years ago or so? FNB Namibia has calculated the average house price in Namibia. It was at that time around a million mm. Namibia dollars, 900,000 or so. Mm. And then they calculated who qualifies in Namibia for the average house. Mm. And it was about 5% of the population that could afford it because you needed an income of around 25,000 at the time to afford mm. the average house. So imagine that in a country where the average house price is affordable to 5% mm. of the population, 95% is excluded. Mm. Now that's where we went wrong. We believe that private sector housing delivery, bank mortgage loans, whether people will buy it, would be the solution. Mm. 
But only a small minority of Namibians earn enough, and only a small minority have permanent jobs that they would even get a banking loan. Yeah, sure. With many others, it's contract work. So we have not adjusted our housing policy to the social and economic conditions in the country. Mm -hmm. And we let the market decide who gets the house and who doesn't. And the result we see now, that housing is a catastrophe. It's that, a catastrophe. That, as I said before, uh, as, as living in shacks is now the norm, exactly. including for people who have jobs. Look at retail workers, look at the shop right workers. We had a discussion yes. earlier. Earlier on, yes. They can, with their salaries, they can only afford to live in shacks. And, and that's where we need to relook. But maybe later in the discussion, we can also talk about some of the alternatives exactly. which are emerging. Exactly. So we go for a quick break. We'll be back. continue with our conversation uh, with uh, Herbert Yeo, who is a housing policy analyst and expert, as a matter of fact, and uh, Meme Francina Kahungu, a councillor for SWAPO at the city of Winduk. Um, Meme Kahungu, let's talk about still, um, you know, on Wednesday and on, on Thursday, uh, the mayor, your colleague, uh, Job Ampanda, um, called a press conference and uh, he had some things to say about you at, the, at that press conference. Part of what he was saying is that uh, you are essentially sabotaging his work. That you are not happy that you are no longer mayor and he is mayor now. And therefore you are trying to undermine his authority uh, to such an extent that you even went to Ombili without informing your fellow councillors. He was pleading ignorance to say, no, he wasn't aware of the demolitions at all. He only saw things later. Um, are, are you trying to sabotage Job Ampanda's administration? Yes, yeah, thank you, Toivo. Before I come to that question, I just want to comment yes, a bit please. on what Mr. Jok said. Yeah. I strongly believe that the government of the Republic of Namibia, just from day one, that's why under the Constitution of the Republic of Namibia, the human rights, the shelter, each person is allowed, in fact, to build and to stay wherever you feel like comfortable. That is one, and it's already the beginning, and it gives that constitutional right for each person to have a decent uh, uh, housing right. So now, in 1992, as you are aware of the Local Authority Act 23 of 1992, in that act, it stipulates very clear that it is a mandate of the local authority also to provide housing shelters to its residents. Already, that is very clear that it's a commitment from the side of the Republic of Namibia, the government. Now, thereafter, government came up with acts which are governing the housing in Namibia. In the same act, it's where they stated, it stated also that there must be various types of houses. And this is where uh, Sheikh Dwellers Federation was born, whereby that composition of that act, it gives 
the, the right to people who are not earning a lot also to be catered for. That is why the discussion of the, the, the revolving fund was also created. And that is where you have the portion of the social housing. So all those are indicators of the seriousness of the government. But again, we just have to find out why houses were not provided or are not provided at a rate which we are supposed to do so that we satisfy each and every one if that is possible. But as you also clearly put it, that it is not just a Namibian problem, but it is a global problem. But it's only to indicate that the government has all legal, uh, I can say the government have all political and social, uh, economic also uh, laws which are governing this. It is just up to whoever is given the mandate to do so. But I must re applaud the government the way it is providing houses. I think you and me will agree with the social housing part, which is mostly funded by the government through Sheikh Dwellers Federation. That project is doing very, very well. But not concentrating much on that, let yeah. me go back to Toivoth. Yeah, let, 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 let me, before you proceed to my previous question, um, when you're saying that uh, the government is trying, that, that, that Memekango cannot be true. Uh, not from my perspective, anyways, I could be wrong. But on paper, yes, we have those provisions. Housing is a human right, you know, it's, a, it's part of uh, providing dignity to people's, people's lives. That is true on paper. But, I mean, if you look at Vinduk, for example, where are we building houses for the masses, Memekahungu, right now? Where is government providing in this city? Where are the houses being constructed? For especially the people that you, you went to see on Wednesday. Where, where, where do we have that? Thank Be you. Because we see houses, we, the housing developments in Winduk are actually on the eastern side of the city. If you go to the western side of the city, there isn't any movement there. So in what way are we providing housing there? Thank you. I am shocked to learn that you are not following of what is happening in government right now. Yeah. My shock came now because you said there is nothing happening. Mass housing only, which is, which is unaffordable to the common man. Okay, we can wait. Yes. Mass housing, but yeah. I'm not talking about mass housing. Okay. The same week we are referring to here yeah. is when the minister, Honorable Erastus Utoni, just hand out more than 100 houses to people in Onyika. And where is Onyika? Onyika is a settlement in Topia's Hainyeko constituency. And even, I think uh, it was this week on Thursday evening, yeah. the minister indicated that he is so serious with this uh, project mm. and he wants to, it to be expanded to other towns. Mm. And be, uh, being a mayor last year, this, that project of low-cost housing yeah. started with me when I was the chairperson. I remember it, it was started in July. And allow me just to use this opportunity to thank all stakeholders, specifically the supervisor, Honorable Minister Erastus Utoni, for being so serious with this project because mm. our target was to build 200 houses by this time. And we did it. Okay. So, Toivo, things are happening. It okay. is just a problem that at times Namibians do not follow as much as they don't follow what is happening in brave warriors, yeah. if they don't follow what is happening in their own government, in, in their own country. Mm. So houses are being built. Mm. We are not talking about mass housing. We are talking about the low cost housing projects. Now, in this case, I'm referring to the to that one which was launched last year is it in built, July. Built together? Is it through built it's, together? It's not through built together. Okay. It is, the minister thought we have, as you said, the, the government gave us already all these acts. The mm. laws are there. Mm. The, the idea is there for us to provide houses yeah. to specifically, he, he, his target now is specifically 
people mm. who are now forming up the informal settlement. Yeah. And he said, what if we put the money together? In that context, he said, any local authority and the regional council yeah. of where that local authority is residing, plus the government, let's put the money. And here also, yeah. he brought in national housing enterprises. So money is coming from the local authority, yeah. government, national housing enterprises, and the regional council. And then they build houses in that specific region. Mm. So, and the aim is to elevate housing problem in the country. Let us learn to really acknowledge and say thanks where something is done. Mm. Okay. No, it's a fair so, point. It's a fair point, Mameka Hungu. The thing is, <clears throat> and I don't want us to labor the point really, maybe I might have missed the, the launch that you spoke about uh, that recently took place. Um, I was just making a point that housing is not even just a problem. It's a crisis. So when there's a crisis, it is difficult for us to really clap hands and say, oh yes, but government is working when there's a crisis. And especially when that crisis has lasted for such a long time. Um, I mean, the pace at which things are moving, I mean, people are on the NHE housing database there for how many years? Waiting for a house, waiting to be approved. But I suppose um, we, we cannot debate this thing. But I will hold the, the earlier question. Yes. And uh, go back. I will still post it. Yes. <laughs> but I just want to give Mr. York an opportunity to come in quickly. The, the, if you want to respond, maybe, uh, Herbert, to Memeka Hungu's assertion and this glossy picture that she's painting that somehow things are moving as far as housing is concerned. Well, she's absolutely right. There is a legal framework. There are different uh, delivery molds yeah. that, that are, so it's not all just mortgaged individual yeah. home ownership. There's a social housing component. There's the Shack Dwellers Federation of Namibia, which is maybe the most successful self-help yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. But the overall question that we need to look at is, despite these initiatives, and despite like there were now 100 houses okay. handed over there, uh, NHE produces, as I said, annually between six and 900, somewhere there roughly. Mm. And mass housing program on top of that delivered certain houses in, in a few towns. But despite it all, our housing backlog in the country has reached record height. The president in his last State of the Nation address put it at 300,000. So we need to ask ourselves, despite these points of delivery, despite the initiatives we have, why is the backlog growing year after year? And around the mass housing program, before it came into effect, and also I worked with the National Youth Council mm -hmm. on that question, because young people like you witnessed now in, in Windhoek are often the most severely affected. Yeah. The older people maybe still have the old family homes where they stay, but young people move in, in search of jobs. Mm -hmm. And the movement to the towns and cities is, is massive. When you look statistically speaking around independence, 70% of Namibians lived in rural areas. Today, half of all Namibians and amongst young people, it's more, already live in towns and the trend will continue. Mm. So towns like Windhoek, Wallfish Bay, etc., will see an increased movement. Now, when we know that, and when we know that our current infrastructure doesn't cater for an, uh, such an arising people. Mm. We need to adjust our housing models to that reality. Mm. And my problem is we have not done it. Mm. And housing delivery by and large, when you compare the number of housing through the um, Shack Dwellers Federation compared to private sector development, it was all tilted towards the private sector. Mm. And of course, they were interested because massive money was to be made. We all know mm. how in Windhoek, for example, what a house cost in 91 mm. and you look 10 years later so sometimes people bought housing just to make a buck yes you buy a house for 500,000 10 years later you sell it for 2 million mm. that's a massive profit mm. on just in so housing became speculative mm. 
Um, and that is where, in, in, in the light of all that, we need a, a very deliberate intervention mm. that can create a much larger number yeah. of houses. I'm not belittling or saying that's not important, the houses that were delivered. They yeah. are. Yeah. But they are far below the number of houses we need. And therefore, where we need a serious discussion on what is housing in terms of our rights. It's on paper, it's clearly there. Um, John Nakuta has an article that will be published in our journal in 10 days time on the housing crisis where he says, housing a right not vindicated in Namibia. So when you look at the paper and the reality, there is a, a gap. And, and I think that's where this discussion is important, to yeah. now look at how do we solve that problem? What is, is, it, is, is more rental stock needed? For example, in, in a country like Singapore, yeah. where they had massive squatter problems at, yeah. at one point, the prime minister decided this must end, squatters no more. And government set up blocks of houses because they hardly have land, so they can only build huge blocks. Yeah that were initially rented out to people, and then those who wanted could buy their own flat. Mm. And in that way, they have solved basically the, the squatter problem. Now, I'm not saying we can replicate that, mm. but we must look under our own condition. What would be the best way to address this problem? And unfortunately, because of the slow pace, the NHE model and the private sector driven model are not working mm. in Namibia. We need to look at other models that can, at a larger scale, um, deliver the housing that people need and adequate housing as well. So it, it can't be without sanitary faci uh, sanitation facilities. Yes. And our sanitation policy on paper is again very clear yeah. Yeah. that sanitation is regarded as a right. But oh. look at the real condition. And this is a bit the dilemma we have. The intentions on paper and the, the reality yeah, actually, that many yeah. people experience. Exactly. So, Masa, are you ready to answer my question now, <laughs> Megawo? <laughs> not yet? Uh, I yeah, am please. not ready for that one because yeah. I think this is what, this what we are discussing here. Yes. Is more serious and helpful to solve the problem which is causing all this up to the demolition. It is just a pity when I don't know what. The example of Singapore, from, for example, from Mr. Joe. It is exactly what the Minister of Urban and Rural Development is doing. He is saying, and we have agreed, all of us, to say, let us remove people from places where they are residing now. It might not be possible. And he is commending the project, which again we started last year, by giving a certificate of acknowledgement of occupation of land in mm. Venduk municipality area. We look at where a person is, we give the certificate to say, yes, municipality is aware that you are here. So that is the, 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 the process which is supposed to be finished so that we, and by giving certificates, you are kind of counting and informing yourself of who's staying in which portion of land of Fenduk municipality. Mm. And then you, after having the number now of all people who are already having uh, structures, then you now see, okay, all this, they are having structures at the proper places. What do I need to do? If it is inhabitable, let me just give this portion of land. Of course, many are congested. Let me decongest some. And then I think, where am I going to take those who I'm taking from here? So that is the process which is supposed to be allowed to finish. And that is when there is a problem if we allow, and we, if we allow people just to build up wherever they want. Because this, let me tell you, it does not benefit specifically those who are in need of land. No, it does not. That is why if you go in those informal settlements and just do your research, you will be informed that one person have more than 10 houses. Some are on standby to be leased out. 
some are already laced out. And we have to be serious, all of us. Are we really on the side of those who do not have land? Or we want the problem to remain like that so that we benefit somewhere? And that is when I now go back to the answer to the question of Toivo. I cannot sabotage anything, but as an elected leader, I have to go to the people and observe what their problem is. Because by you not listening to the people, you will also not be able to see how you can help them. Mm. And if Mr. Mayor is saying that I am sabotaging his work, by implication, he is telling the world and the country to be specific that what he was saying that the Swapo party is no more ruling is not true. Because if you have a Swapo party representative, let us assume maybe just one who's sabotaging your work, and just that one councillor prevents all 14 councillors to implement. What does that mean? Can really one person prevent 14 people to implement a, a plan? Can that be possible? Mm. That let's, one. Uh, let's hold that thought. Quick break. I'm coming back to you, Mega Hongo, but we are going for a quick break. We continue with uh, the agenda. Um, I am uh, talking to Herbert Yoch and Meme Francina Kahungu. Thank you for replying, Meme, to that um, accusation of sabotaging Joban Panda. The, what the man is saying, if I, if I heard him correctly in his press conference on, uh, on Thursday was, the fact that you went to Ombili and engage the community without informing your collective leadership as soon as you were told that there were such events happening undermines the collective leadership of the town, of, of, of the city to say you want individual victories instead of a, of a collective victory to confront these challenges. Why didn't you inform your colleagues? Thank you very much. Uh... Mr. Mayor is entitled to his opinion. Yeah. Inform your colleagues that you are going to a certain point. Being a counselor, you are not doing the voluntary work. Yeah. We are receiving a monthly council allowance for us to do council's work yeah. by implication to look after the well-being of the inhabitants of mm. that local authority, in mm. this case, Venduk. Now, if a councillor is receiving a council or monthly allowance for only sitting in meetings, then that person is misplaced. Why are you receiving a, on a monthly basis a monthly allowance, even if you do not sit, there is that monthly allowance for what? Is it not for you to go out there and observe the needs of the inhabitants and thereafter inform council through the council meeting of the challenges 
which are faced by the inhabitants. Mm. Now, if inhabitants are asking you to go and listen to them, or writing to you and say this is the problem, the plight of the inhabitants, and you are turning a blind eye, mm. what does that mean? Are you there for the inhabitants? Am I a representative? If I do not listen or hear calls of those who send me there, mm. no, no, then I hear you. I hear you. who is betraying who? Who is sabotaging who? Yeah. Are we not sabotaging the good intention of the people who send us to the local authority? I hear you. It's a fair, it's a fair question. I was asking because... Um, because um, when I spoke to you just, I think it was in January or February, on the evening review, just a few weeks after you've been uh, hosted, if I can put it that way, uh, as mayor, <clears throat> and I asked you, what commitment do you have, or do you have towards uh, running this city now with, with all other representatives? And uh, your answer at the time was to say, we are going to give our all to make sure that, uh, you said actually that um, if council fails, it's collective failure. And if it succeeds, it's, it's collective success. Now we are starting to see cracks. Uh, we do not know where, who is to blame for that, but we are, we've started to see cracks within council but let me put this question before I come back to you, Mimeka Hungu. Let me put this question to, to Herbert, who is also a very astute uh, observer of politics. Do you think, Mr. York, that um, what we are seeing now, what we are starting to see, these quarrels, these blame games, is uh, the, a, a result of the intricacies of coalition politics. Of course, Wapo is not in the coalition, but they are ruling together with others. Um, is it difficult in a, in a, to be in a position like that for anyone really to run successfully a council? It is, and the problem lies not so... The one aspect is the, the composition of council. But what I try to mention is we have a structural problem with housing. So the structural problem doesn't go away if it's a SWAPO 100% council or an LPM or an AR council. The structural problem is there. And what I mean by that is that the housing backlog that, that we, we struggle to achieve what is on paper, namely to give a, a, a living reality to the right to adequate housing. Yeah. We're not the only country. Uh, across the region it's a problem but also globally mm. even in industrialized countries in cities like london many people are unable to afford housing in, in parts of california people are now sleeping in their cars because they can't even afford rental anymore so it's not just a namibian problem mm. but in our case it's it's a, a, a very tricky problem because it affects so many and of course and and that's not surprising Politics plays itself out around the housing mm. issue. AR, as a youth movement, emerged around urban housing issues. Landless people's movement, like the name says, another youthful organization, emerged around the land issues. So because it's so prominent and it affects so many people, you have, of course, a lot of politics playing itself out. Mm. What would be tragic is if we use the, the misery mm. of, of fellow citizens to play political games mm. with it. And there, I think, the, the point that you seemingly raised earlier, this the, the question of collective leadership and collective responsibility is absolutely crucial. Mm. It cannot be a question to say, I'm not interested to solve the housing issue if I'm not in power yeah, at yeah. that point. Yeah. No. The, the housing issue is not to be solved for the sake of politicians. We need to solve it for the sake of hundreds of thousands of Namibians who live in these mm. conditions right now.
But of course, that's not how politics works in practice. Mm -hmm. and, and so, depending where you are, yeah. if you like outside the levers of power, you point out that those who are in charge have failed. Yeah. And once you're in power, you point out what has actually been done. That, that <laughs> is something that always happens. So we can't avoid that from happening. That's yeah. part of the political game and, of course, ongoing campaigning, which, which any political party would try and do. But what we must do is to have this sober discussion yeah. on what are the changes that we need to make. Mm -hmm. And not in part of a blame game, yes. part of saying, Despite our efforts, despite the laws, despite the policies, we have not achieved that. Why not? Yeah. And I can give you a very concrete example. A few years ago, I was working with the Ministry of Labor to link the national employment policy, creating additional jobs, to the mass housing project. With a colleague from UNAM, we were working on that, and we gave a very detailed um, proposal after we visited the mass housing sites across the country mm. to see what was happening. Mm. And we proposed how, for example, in terms of building materials, what could be done locally. Mm. The invader bush should long have been harnessed and produced further into boards, building yeah. materials. Yeah. We, we import almost all our building materials from South Africa still, mm. including those that are used at doors, um, window frames, etc., etc. You can basically procure the building materials locally. So you would have a massive spin off, not only in terms of housing delivery, but also creating jobs and incomes mm. for many people. And that could have been rolled out on a large scale. Why it didn't happen? Mm. Because we spoke, including solar panels on every house, which actually the mass housing program. Yeah. had provided for. So you would have created a spin-off effect. And I think we need the discussion on these things now intensified, hopefully not on the basis of gaining political points, yeah. but solving a problem that's so burning for so many Namibians. And I think we, we still, despite the progress made, we, we yeah. still could do far better than what we do now. And um, I hope that political parties will not use the housing crisis as a a ball to score points <laughs> so against ball. each other. It's too <laughs> important for that. Yeah, yeah. So, Meme Francina, the, <clears throat> what I found very interesting is that um, there's uh, a switch in the roles that you played before as mayor. When you were mayor, Joban Panda was on the ground with the people. What we saw last week is Job Ampana being mayor and you were on the ground <laughs> with the people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> is that just coincidence or is it uh, really how things are that... Um, thank you. I, I, I just want to see if um, thank you, from, thank the, you. from the Swapo side uh, in particular, hey. Is it dangerous for, are you scared that if this coalition succeeds that it doesn't count well in the favor of Swapo? <laughs> Thank you very much, Doivo. Your question, I just want to rephrase or to correct it or to add a bit. When I was a mayor, I was on the ground, almost on a daily basis with the people. Of course, AR used to be there yeah. also. Them, they used to be there to see, to, say, to see where the problem is and to create also problems. Mm. I was there to solve problems of the people. Just a correction that when I was a mayor, I was on the ground, up and running. It was a time of Corona as this time, mm. but I was there. Now, you, you want to say, I am not happy. I am a person who is strongly believed that I will only succeed if those who are given under my care mm. are also succeeding. Mm. I told you at the beginning, as you correctly put it, that I am 
here to work together with all the councillors. Specifically yeah. that in the chamber, yeah. your swap does not matter. ARPDM, IPC, NUDO, what? It does not matter there. Yeah. When you discuss, you discuss as a council member. It is just a pity now here it is Swapo. Mm. But I'm repeating, the Swapo whom was termed not toothless any longer is the Swapo who is nowadays termed able to instigate and sabotage. Mm. That's why I said by implication it is an indication that Swapo is ruling even if the people don't want or not, because if Swapo can be accused, mm -hmm. then it shows that Swapo has power. Now, I, I am saying, here we are talking of, let us be serious with the land issue, land delivery for housing, specifically in urban areas. Mm -hmm. The review we want, we are talking here, the review of the policies. I think this is what Honorable Utoni is doing. He is reviewing the way we are implementing the delivery of land mm. in urban area for housing. What needs to be done and the proposal we need to make before we make other people make our conversation also useless is to say, while we have this initiative in place of in situ upgrading, you are upgrading houses where the people are and while they are there, let us see how we can add more money. Here now we need many stakeholders so that they can give money to municipality or through the ministry or through NHE mm. so that now we build many houses in the local areas. Mm. It is only by providing houses, but before baby houses, let us agree that what is important is provision of ownership of land. The moment you do not have a well-structured and well-organized database of who is owning a land, then you are not going to help because if you leave the informal settlement to grow the, at, at the pace it is growing now, it will be very difficult for anyone to solve that problem because you will not be able to identify who already has a land, who does not own a land. Mm. So that is why I'm repeating the certificates were necessary and are still necessary because they give you an indication of who is who at which time. Mm. And then it will help you now if you... You, you, you scale up this uh, project of low-cost low housing, then you know, okay, for example, we are supported with money. Mm. Yeah? Onyika, we gave this company. And what happened, for example, at Ituyeni? This is the project which is run by Sheikh Dweller's Federation, but with the assistance from the ministry under social housing. Uh, a, a, a program. There we have agreed with COSDEC that people residing in that area will take part in the building of these houses. Mm. And then they learn skills on building. And at Ituyani, the most of the bricks which are being used there, they were built by the people themselves. Mm. Here in Namibia, what is taking all of us back is sabotaging a good work. Mm. What happened on Wednesday and then what was said uh, during the press conference by Mr. Mayor is a good lesson for all of us to say, if the other person is ruling or is trying to do something good, any organization out there which is trying to bring havoc to become unruly and to, to, to make people not to follow is not also benefiting because the moment you find it difficult to work because you believe someone is sabotaging you, mm. that is exactly the good thing. You must always remember that if I am having an organization and I am 
influencing people to do bad things, thinking is to discourage or to discredit that other one, in the end, none of us will benefit anything. But it's just a, a problem that we make the people who are really in need to suffer. I understand. I'm getting an indication that our time is up, but I just want to put one last question to you, Meme Kahungu, in not so many words. One quick question. In the past eight months of this coalition leading the city of Vinduk, has is Vinduk being led better or has the leadership of the city regressed in, in brief? I have to be honest here. Now and then I informed my fellow councillors. I said, I am not happy. I am disappointed. The optimistic uh, spirit which was even out there, people looking ahead of you to provide good things, people are now disappointed, including myself. I said, what is that is holding us up to mm. do things? Because I see we sit now and then, we have meetings, but what is that we are producing out of those meetings? I hear you. I think it's, uh, it's a good <laughs> You are loud and clear. Mr. Yoch, uh, I don't have enough time again to continue, but uh, thank you for coming. And um, I think it was a beautiful conversation that we must continue again at some stage, if time allows. But, but thank you for coming. Can I say one yes, sentence? Please. And yes. I think it, like the nucleus of, of like you mentioned, um, with the Shek Dwellers Federation, yes. a certain project, there is at uh, the N Namibian University of Science and Technology, mm. the Integrated Land Management yes. Institute, uh -huh. which also works on it. So, so you bring an idea, you can bring in international experiences and you see what can be done locally. And the president has just now mentioned we need to produce things locally. Yes. We have the resources, but we need to process them further and uh, create the value chains around housing and construction. Yes. And there are endless possibilities and we must use them. Thank you, Herbert. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me here. Thank yes. you. Thank you. That was uh, the agenda for this week. Thank you for watching.